welcome in Adam here from OrlandoDrummer.com. It is so good to see all of you guys, and thank you so much for taking the time to check out another drum lesson. So what we're doing today is covering, uh, or I'm going to be trying to cover, a topic that I get asked about all the time, and that is, how do I get flams inside of my playing? Or more specifically, how do I get flams in my fills? Well, the answer to me was always rudiments, but I know it's not that simple. We've got to talk about a little bit more than just rudiments. But essentially what we're going to be doing today are tackling the two rudiments that you should know if you want to start incorporating flams into your playing. In my opinion, those rudiments are the Swiss Army triplet, which is played as flam right left, and of course the flamadiddle, which we're going to play that today as flam right left left. If you have those two rudiments already memorized, this lesson will be a breeze for you. But if not, this is a great way to introduce yourself to them. Now, we got a lot of phrasing, orchestration, accenting. We've got a lot of different things to cover, so let's hop straight into it. So the best way to hop in and understand a fill like this is to first learn the phrasing. What the phrasing is are the groups of notes that I'm using to construct my total of 16 notes. The numbers of that phrase are 664. So we're going to have one group of six, another group of six, and then a final group of four, and that will equal 16 notes every single time. Our first group of six is flam, right, left, flam, right, left. So one E and a two E is just a Swiss Army triplet played two times. Now the next six notes, or our second group of six, is going to be played as kick, kick, flam, right, left, left or two kick drums, and then your flammed paradiddle or the flammadiddle. The last four notes, or four E and A, uh, are just going to be played as kick, kick, right, left. The only rule that I'm going to give to you guys is that if you are flamming or if there's an accent written in the notation, take that right hand and move it over to the floor tom. That's a way that you're going to use it most naturally anyway, so we're going to go ahead and start doing that right off the bat. Let's check out just this basic linear pattern with the rudiments and the phrasing. Uh, we're going to do it kick, snare, and floor tom with the accents, and then after that we're going to cover orchestration and all the different things that we can do with this around the drum set. Let's check it out. All right, guys, if the phrasing's feeling good, the accents are nice and clean, and you can get in and out of this um, as a 16th note fill, then we're ready for orchestration. Now, as far as orchestration goes, I want to mention that the ideas that I show you are not the only ones. They're just my favorite ones, but it's your job to go home and make up your own. So with that said, let's cover the orchestration that I like. In this particular one, we're taking our first Swiss Army triplet, played as flam, right, left. And the flam, the right hand, is going up to our rack tom. I don't really care if you play them in unison, if you spread them out. doesn't really matter to me, however you want to do it. So you're going to have flam, right, left, with the right hand of the flam up on your rack tom. In the second Swiss Army triplet, immediately following that one, we're going to have flam, right, left, except the right hand of the flam is played off of the floor tom. After that, we're going to have kick, kick, flamadiddle, and the flam of the flamadiddle, the right hand is going to go to a ride cymbal or a stacker if you have one. Uh, it's a really, really unique sound and a great way to utilize that flam rudiment. After that, we're going to have kick, kick, right, left, and that's our last four notes of the fill. That's going to be played as kick, kick, right on the floor tom, accented, left on the snare, accented, and then we're done. Let's check out this orchestration at three speeds, and then I'll show you guys what it's like to sort of improv around with this pattern and get a bunch of ideas going around the kit.
did want to give you guys one last little trick. If you take the flam and put that on the floor tom and the snare, but then you take the right hand and instead of coming back to the snare like we've been doing, if you move that over to the hi-hat, it sounds pretty dope. Check it out. And the final thing that I wanted to do for you guys was to play about one minute of improv. The reason I wanted to do this is because that's a thing that my drum teachers never made me do. I was never told to go take this pattern or this fill that we learned and go and do your own thing with it and see what you can make up. So the point of the next minute of this lesson is to really give you guys some inspiration and some ideas for where a pattern like this can go so you can take it home in your own kit and move it wherever you think it sounds the coolest. Let's check out some improv for about one minute. Thanks so much for checking out this lesson, guys. It is very much appreciated. Make sure you head over to OrlandoDrummer.com and check out the hundreds of lessons that are available for download, as well as my drum blog and a ton of other free content that is available. That is OrlandoDrummer.com. I hope to see you guys there. And if you want to get a hold of me, all of my social media links, including Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook, are all below in the description of this video. Thanks a lot, guys. I'll see you soon.